So let's talk about HOS. HOS stands for HTTP Live Streaming. It was created in 2009 by Apple. And the reason for its invention was that at that time, the main player on web video was Adobe Flash. And Apple didn't want to actually add support for Flash on their iPhone operating system, so they had to fill in the gap. Since then, the technology has grown tremendously and it's been adopted by the largest players, such as Google for YouTube, Netflix, and so forth. Now, let's look into how this actually works. Now, let me clear this board. And I have imported a screenshot of YouTube's playback timeline. And to kind of just make this more real life example like. So, for example, I have this video of 9 minutes and 35 seconds. The way it works is this video is sliced into 10 second intervals. I am delineating this here, but I am very, very bad at getting this accurately. So ignore the imprecision, but imagine that this is 10 minutes. It's sliced perfectly into 10 second intervals. And what you end up with is these tiny chunks of your video. So when you let's say open a video on YouTube, what happens is a file with an extension M3U8 gets downloaded. This is called the playlist file or the manifest file. Okay. Now what this file has is where these chunks are located for different resolutions so you can download them. So let's say this video has 360p version, so lower resolution, 720p and 1080p. And in here, you will have every 10 seconds together with the URL where you can download that chunk of the video. So it is exactly the same for each resolution. Now, if you start watching at 360p, you download all these tiny chunks you don't notice how they're concatenated as you play. You start from at the beginning until the end of the video and you're done. Now, the beauty of this is essentially something called adaptive bitrate streaming. Okay. Now, what this means is that Depending on the bandwidth of your internet, it picks the right resolution in order to provide you with the best experience and without having to buffer the video or kind of any essentially issues you would have during playback. So let's say that you open the video and the system doesn't know that you have hyper fast internet. So it will start playing at let's say 360p. So let's say that this chunk here is played at 360p. Then it figures out, oh, uh, this person's internet is really, really fast. So it will automatically start downloading, let's say you're already at minute five, the 10 second chunks from the 1080p version. So it will become uh, here, let's say 1080p. And let's say, uh, we stay there until the end. We're going to take a few examples by, let's say, you manually changing the resolution in just a second. So in here, for those of you that have used YouTube, uh, you know that the red color represents the elapsed time. So something that you've watched or you might have skipped. The light gray over here is essentially the already buffered. And the dark gray is the unbuffered. Okay, now the buffered is for what the system has decided should be your current playback resolution. So if it's 1080p, this has buffered in 1080p. Now, what happens is that you don't really have this guarantee as you start downloading because the system evaluates your bandwidth throughout the entire time. 
So let's say your internet speed drops and it notices this, so it starts reducing the resolution to 720p, for example. Now, that being said, another way to think about it is if you actually manually switch your resolution from the settings, so you click on the cog wheel and you change the resolution from 1080p to, let's say, 720 and you will get the red line, but if you actually go back, you will notice that it will start re-downloading because let's say this line was already downloaded in a different resolution. Now the 720p switch will absolutely clear the already buffered and it will force it to re-download the data in this resolution. And then the unbuffered is obviously straightforward until you have a uh, kind of reasonable margin of buffered data, you won't have to download. So obviously as you progress, it only down downloads the chunk as needed. Okay, if you've watched, for example, Netflix videos, you might have experienced where the video will have slightly longer period of lower resolution before it figures out that your speed is really good to kind of go to the full HD version because the downloaded chunks already are there. So it might decide to kind of play out whatever you've already downloaded for this resolution rather than immediately force you up to the higher one and download more. So this dynamic switching between resolutions at runtime is called adaptive bitrate streaming. And this is essentially the main techno technology idea, the cornerstone of a video web streaming and HOS. The thing to bear in mind is that it is not supported by every codec and some media players use different codecs for different resolutions because they will have different level of optimization. Now this supports subtitles. So for example, here you can enable, let's say closed captions on YouTube, meaning closed captions, meaning that they're not embedded in the video, but you can toggle them on and off. This is also supported by having an extension for subtitles and the format is WebVTT. So it's something called segmented WebVTT. And this is the format for the subtitles that actually support this type of chunking and are okay with streaming inside HTML5 web page or your iOS device or Android and so forth. Now, let's finally touch on the playback speed and this should uh, wrap up. Now, with the playback speed, what happens is if I have the entire playback and I have, le of, let's say, 10 minutes of playback and I have 60 frames per second. So let's go here, 10 minutes. 60 frames per second. If I double my playback, meaning I go from 1x to 2x, I'm picking this because it's easier to reason. What happens is this essentially skips every second frame. So uh, the frames per second for the video will still remain whatever they are for the video as regular, meaning if it was 60 frames per second that it was recorded at, and that's how it's going to remain. But what happens is you essentially decide how many frames to skip per second. So if I double the speed, I will essentially skip 30 frames per one second. But it doesn't mean that I will just get displayed 30, 30 frames per one second and go to the next. What actually happens is I actually cut, uh, remove them. So I get the next 30 frames from the following second. So I always remain at 60 FPS, but I'm at compressed time. So I have 60 FPS in again, one second, but I have taken half of the frames from the following second. I hope this makes sense. So this is why the frame rate remains the same, even when you change the playback speed but uh, what happens is you basically drop number of frames per second in order to achieve this speed increase. Now, because obviously this is supported, the, the same applies uh, for the uh, subtitles. So as you speed up, you get the subtitles adapted as well. Okay. 
Now, I think this uh, covers the fundamentals. In reality, the technology is obviously not that simple in terms of deciding and evaluating at runtime what resolution to use, a bandwidth, and there are quite a few other elements to it called uh, CDN, which will be covered in the following video. Thank you.